let me continue this review, which I consider to be a superior paper if you want to understand that a minus lens causes nearsightedness in all normal eyes, on every normal eye. Big statement, but certainly there's proof for that. So I will continue this. Here is the experiment itself. Blank circles are the treated, black is the control. In this case, no lens or a blank lens was put on the uh, control and a minus three and a plus three were put on the test. The test is to determine if the eye is dynamic and the refractive state of the fundamental eye follows the lens. If it doesn't follow a lens, the eye is a box camera, and the concept of dynamic eye is a failure. If the eye does follow the applied lens, then the eye is dynamic, and the box camera is dead. Here, very basically, is the data. Notice, starting at day zero, the eye goes down from plus four and a half to two diopters. Notice that the data is noisy for about a year. There is easy to see variations from zero down to zero, from two diopters down to zero and back up to two diopters. This means that long-term measurement is required and getting an average is crucial. Here is the average of three eyes. Three eyes had a plus three, three eyes had a minus three. But this is one specific eye characterization of all the others. Notice they started together. One eye went to, it looks like a plus eight, and the other the plus four. This is completely unusual because the control group came down to plus two and settled out at plus two. Plus two diopters is a normal refractive state for all of us. It's preferable. If you have a plus two or any positive status, your eyes are normal and you'll have superior distant vision. It's when your refractive state is negative that you can't see 20. 20. Here is the um, minus three diopter. Again, the same thing happened. The, the, uh, with the minus three, the eye went down below zero. The eye became nearsighted. The other eye stayed at plus two. When these lenses were remo removed, according to the paper, the eyes converges, converged back to very nearly the same. I would add that a difference in between the two eyes of one doctor is in fact completely normal based on the quality of the data. Even the control group showed differences of one doctor over time. But these are judgments of education, of science. They convince me that a native state of the eye is completely induced by the child's habits. Tragic, perhaps, but I consider that to be scientific truth, and this is final verification for it. Now, I can't change a child, but I can know that I've got to get rid of my near environment when I'm 2040 or 2050 with a plus, or my vision simply goes down a steady rate of about two thirds of a doctor per year for each year in school. That is a severe warning to all of us. Yet, I don't blame the MD or OD. I must blame my habits, and this knowledge is a big help to learn that. Thank you.